Open RAN is just about the hottest topic in telecoms right now. So I'm talking with Sachin Kati. He is advisor for strategy at VMware and also the co-chair of the technical steering committee at the ORAN Alliance about some of the key developments in the Open RAN sector. Uh, so Sachin, good to see you again. Um, now VMware is working with DISH uh, on its Open RAN based 5G rollout. Uh, what are the key takeaways from that engagement so far? Thanks, Ray. So as we've talked about before, uh, DISH is a really groundbreaking development. Uh, so there are several fusts as we roll this network out. It's the first uh, fully ORAN compliant network with an ambition to install and deploy all of the different uh, ORAN elements. It's the first fully containerized 5G network end-to-end. -end. So it's uh, using containerized deployments uh, regardless of whether it's the RAN or the core. And uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a truly groundbreaking uh, deployment. So we are learning a lot. Uh, it's uh, getting exciting as the network gets stood up. I think some of the lessons uh, we're learning right now are uh, kind of the integration challenges that come with uh, putting different vendors elements together and how do we actually automate uh, the ability to test uh, for these vendors elements to be able to interoperate. How do we automate the deployment of such a brand new containerized network and leverage all of the cloud automation tools uh, that the rest of the world is enjoying uh, in being able to do this much faster. So lots of exciting uh, stuff happening. And um, from the engagement, has this led to any particular uh, product developments or, or an advancement of the VMware platform at all? Yeah, so uh, I think we have learned a lot as we are starting to deploy and uh, bring up these networks. So on the RAN specifically, I'll focus on that. Uh, on the infrastructure layer, uh, I think we are, as we've talked about in the past, uh, rolling out a lightweight version of the VMware Telco Cloud stack. So the goal here is to give you the full benefits of uh, virtualization that VMware brings uh, with its Telco Cloud platform while still being able to uh, have a very lightweight footprint uh, because at the very far edge where the RAN is being deployed, uh, you do not have a lot of compute to spare. And moreover, the workloads that you're running in the RAN are extremely latency sensitive. So they do not want a lot of overhead in between the actual work that's being done, which is the RAN processing and the underlying compute infrastructure. So VMware is finding that balance, which is how do I bring you the benefits of virtualization with our hypervisor, where you can pool a variety of workloads together. So from the RAN to edge computing workloads and uh, still have the ability to do that on a single server and yet preserve the lightweight nature and give you the very, very low latency performance uh, that you need for the RAN workloads. So that's that's been a pretty big development. Uh, this, is for a, this is a first for VMware. Uh, VMware has never had such a real-time version of its cloud stack and that is being rolled out in DISH uh, right now. So that's on the infrastructure layer. Uh, on the automation layer, uh, I think we are uh, learning and rolling out features uh, that allow operators to manage a highly distributed deployment uh, that the RAN will bring. So the RAN at the picture I like to paint is thousands of little clouds because every cell site is a tiny cloud. It's maybe one server or two server or a local data center might be three to five servers. And a single operator in the US might have on the order of 10,000 of these. So how do you actually scale the management of such a highly distributed system? How do you scale the deployment of workloads across these systems? How do you provide reliability, availability, failover, all of these components? And so VMware is rolling out capabilities in its Telco Cloud Automation product, the TCA product, uh, that allows you to manage uh, such a highly distributed deployment. And both of those, I think uh, we learned a lot and we are still learning a lot as we help DISH uh, roll out the network and those learnings are being incorporated into these two products. So one of the key challenges associated with Open RAN deployments is integration. Uh, is VMware learning anything from its engagement with DISH that might help to ease those integration challenges? I think this is uh, and uh, and uh, this is one of the opportunities of uh, an open RAN deployment. So as we know, open RAN is meant to be multi-vendor. It has open interfaces, and you can stitch together elements from different vendors as you deploy this network. 
But the natural kind of byproduct of that is how do you make sure everything actually works reliably end to end once the network is rolled out, right? And so that's really where integration comes in. And there are really two kinds of integration. So one is the platform integration. So if you're deploying a horizontal telco cloud, like the one Dish is deploying with VMware, and you have network functions uh, that are coming from a variety of different vendors, how do you make sure that the network functions with all of their unique, different, diverse requirements work well on this horizontal cloud? Because the cloud has not been designed for any one particular network function. It's meant to be a general purpose horizontal infrastructure. So there we are investing a lot in building automation pipelines, in building CI CD pipelines uh, that allow vendors to come in and define kind of how they want to integrate, how they want to test, and be able to automatically push new releases almost every week or every two weeks, and automatically be able to run a variety of tests and get deployed on top of the platform. So the, the, the work that we are really doing here is how do we cut out the friction? How do we cut out all of the people that you would typically need to do manually these tasks and automate and increase the agility uh, for people to continuously innovate and build these network functions. And the reason this is important at this particular juncture of time is the industry is going through a transition from VNFs to CNFs. So a lot of the CNFs that we see out there in the industry are still being developed, right? Uh, they're really being deployed and rolled out for the first time. So there's a lot of product velocity even in the CNFs. Uh, there's been constant, all of the vendors are constantly optimizing and updating these CNFs. So you can't really have a very heavy process that is very manual to figure out whether this is working, how to deploy it. And so that's where VMware as the platform integrator for DISH is investing in building automation pipelines that allows uh, vendors to increase the velocity of uh, deploying uh, these CNFs. So there's a lot going on in terms of uh, companies investing more time and effort into developing uh, products and applications specific to Open RAN. Where do you think the industry needs to focus its R&D efforts the most in 2021? Yeah, so the next phase, I think uh, the first phase really was, as I like to think about it, uh, radio disaggregation and compute disaggregation, right? So that was what was in, we invested a, a lot in R&D over the last few years. And so this is the success of the open front all interface in ORAN and the virtualization of the RAN workloads, right? So being able to run it on general purpose uh, processes. So that's already happening. This is being deployed in uh, DISH, for example. Rakuten has already deployed some aspects of this in the past, and many operators are doing this now. So really the next level of innovation and the next level of R&D investment is gonna come along the other two forms of disaggregation that uh, ORAN is pushing towards, which is the management plane and the control plane. So the management plane is really around making sure that the way we do orchestration and management of the RAN is truly open, has multi-vendor interfaces, and has a platform which allows people to innovate on very quickly, right? So be able to introduce new management capabilities. So this is the service management and orchestration framework of ORAN. So that's one heavy area of investment. How do we define the interfaces? How do we build products and systems that can take advantage of these open interfaces and give operators a modern AI-enabled way of managing their infrastructure? So that's one layer. The second layer is the control plane disaggregation, which is where the RIC comes in. So the RIC stands for the RAN Intelligent Controller. And one way to think about this is the equivalent of an SDN controller uh, in the radio network. Right? So SDN tried to decouple the control plane from the switches and the routers. And on top of an SDN controller, you could deploy new logic that could customize the control plane of a network. So a similar approach here in the RAN, which is with open interfaces into the underlying data plane infrastructure or the user plane infrastructure, being able to decouple the control plane logic of the radio access network and run it as apps on top of this rig, right? And so that is kind of very exciting uh, because we are talking about being able to tease apart what is happen what kind of control algorithms are being used on a per user level in real time and being able to run these as apps on top of it. So I think the next phase of investment really is in fleshing out these interfaces and making sure they're mature, getting the first controller platforms deployed out there, 
Uh, we are working on one uh, that uh, that that people can trial and start investing in building a marketplace of these uh, apps uh, on top of these RICs uh, so that operators now can unlock a lot more innovation in the space uh, than it has been than that has been possible uh, before. So at the same time as there's uh, you know more effort and focus from the developer side, there's more and more large operators committing to open RAN deployments. And, and we've just seen recently four of the biggest operators in Europe, Deutsche Telekom, Orange, Vodafone and Telefonica, committing to open RAN and, and trying to really light a fire under the European open RAN sector. Uh, what kind of impact do you think that, that this kind of de development will have? W will it accelerate the market even more? Absolutely. Uh, it was a very significant announcement and I think it has the potential to turbocharge uh, the rollout of Open RAN uh, in Europe. Uh, I think specifically the thing that I'm looking forward to most uh, with this announcement is uh, accelerating brownfield Open RAN deployments. Right. So, so far we've been talking about DISH and uh, Rakuten and they have the luxury of being brand new and greenfield so they don't really have a legacy to deal with. But uh, of the four operators that we just mentioned in this announcement, they are all they all have existing large legacy deployments. So really, uh, it's encouraging to see them coming together, put their weight behind Open RAN, because I think this will really accelerate the development of brownfield strategies uh, for Open RAN rollout, which obviously we need uh, to really make Open RAN scale across the world. Okay, excellent. Well, I'm sure we're going to hear about more of these kind of announcements, more of these kind of efforts throughout 2021. So, Sashin, great to talk to you today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Ray. It was great talking to you.